minefields, barbed wire, armed guards and attack dogs. Getting across the Berlin Wall meant risking imprisonment if you were lucky. Your life if not. But despite the grave danger, thousands attempted to make their way to freedom by land, air and even sea. Today on Nutty History, we're covering the bravest and brashest escapes from East to West Berlin. But before we can knock down the wall, let us know what historical hiccups you'd like to hear about next time. Wolfgang Engels was a former East German soldier who actually helped construct the wall before defecting two years later. The bold teenager noticed a new batch of armoured cars on site and befriended some border guards who unwittingly taught him how to drive the tanks. After the guards went off on break, Engels stole a tank and headed straight for the wall, hoping to ram his way through to freedom. Teens really do think they're invincible, don't they? Engel offered up spots on his getaway vehicle to passers-by, shouting, I'm leaving for the West! Who's coming? Weirdly, no one hopped onto the stranger-driven tank as it ploughed into the wall. While the nose of the tank broke through, the doors remained definitively in East Germany. Engel found himself entangled in barbed wire, and he tried to summit the wall while dodging flying bullets. Shot once through the back, Western Germans who were drinking at a nearby bar formed a human ladder to rescue the wounded Engel and pull him over to their side. Upon his arrival in West Germany, Engel asked for a drink, but was instead taken to the hospital, where he spent three weeks recovering from a collapsed lung. But we'll cheers to this, to this incredibly risky, but still somehow successful feat. A few months after the wall's construction, a train engineer named Harry de Terling discovered an unusual train track from an East Berlin suburb into West Berlin. De Terling began planning a group escape on the last train to freedom. Inviting 25 friends and family members on board, de Terling drained the air from the train's emergency brakes and conducted it full steam ahead into West Germany to the understandable shock of border guards. East Germany blocked the railway the following day, but de Terling and his friends had already choo-chooed <laughs> their way to freedom. It wasn't long before the idea arose that rather than going over the wall, why not go under? In the early days of the Berlin Walls, tunnels were a huge success in escaping numbers. NBC funded a group of West German students to build a 131-foot tunnel beneath a factory. The resulting escapees, 29 before the tunnel's discovery by East German guards, was documented and later broadcast as a documentary. The most escapes of all time came from another student dug tunnel, when 57 people fled East Berlin underground over a period of two days. It was such a loss for the East German authorities that they installed listening devices and began a constant monitoring across the wall for tunnelling activities. The three Bethke brothers each attempted their own creative means of escape in the craziest sibling rivalry ever. The oldest brother, Ingo Bethke, had previously worked as a soldier at the wall and knew the area well. He planned ahead by surreptitiously cutting a small hole in part of the border fence. He used a wooden block to check for landmines in a real-life game of Minesweeper. Finally, he approached the River Elbe, with a blow-up mattress tucked under his arm. In the dense fog, he avoided the spotlights of police boats and crossed the river into West Germany in a half hour on an air mattress. Eight years later, Ingo aided his younger brother Holger's escape, which was a bit less relaxed. After much planning, practice and top secret communication, Holger and a friend disguised themselves as electricians with a bevy of wires around their necks and headed into an East Berlin house. After hiding out in the attic for 13 hours, Holger managed to shoot an arrow from the attic across the Berlin Wall to West Berlin. Ingo found the arrow an hour later, stuck in a bush. Attached by fishing line, the brothers ran a steel cable across the line. 
With wooden rollers, Holger rode his homemade zip line into West Berlin. When the decline was less than anticipated, Holger was forced to crawl the remaining rope, hanging up above the wall, where luckily the guards below were taking a snooze. Somehow, this psychotic idea had actually worked. By the time the youngest Bethke brother attempted escape, Border Patrol was stricter than ever before. Not one to be deterred by bombs or armed guards, Ingo and Holger purchased ultralight planes and taught themselves to fly. For disguise, the brothers painted their planes with Soviet stars and dressed in military uniforms before flying across the wall and successfully rescuing their youngest brother, Egbert. Something tells me that even if this trio had been arrested, they wouldn't have remained in jail for long. Seriously, this story needs to be made into a movie. Would you have waited out the fall of the Iron Curtain or risked a blaze of bullet fire to make your way westward? Let us know in the comments below, along with what historical heroes you'd like to learn about next. Until next time, stay nutty.